let's have a look at this crash because, um, yeah, this one was a bit of a controversial one. George Russell in the Williams attacking Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes. And uh, it was a really big impact. So we're on board with Russell then. And uh, DRS is open on, uh, on slick tyres on a drying track. Bottas defends the inside. Russell goes to the outside and wham, bam. Straight off the two of them into a heavy crash. And Russell's absolutely apoplectic about this. Uh, but let's take it back again and slow it down to find out exactly what happened. So Russell's attacking Bottas. First of all, why is Bottas the Mercedes driver in this position? He's having a really tough weekend. Didn't have the pace in qualifying. Got stuck in, uh, in traffic in the first part of the race. Couldn't overtake Lance Stroll for a long time. On top of that, Mercedes pitted him too late. They were very cautious pitting him for slick tyres. In fact, he was about the last driver of anyone to pit for slicks. So his tyres aren't quite up to temperature in the same way as Russell's are in the Williams, who pitted two laps earlier. So he's under pressure. He's having a horrible weekend, Bottas. And uh, George Russell in the Williams, the Mercedes protege, is, uh, is coming up behind him. So first things first, we pause it there. Russell, DRS open, has a big closing speed on Bottas. And quite clearly, Valtteri has defended the inside, right up to, to the white line almost. He's showing where George has to go. He's got to go to the outside. So he does. Now, if I pause again here, you can see that, uh, that Bottas has now moved from right on the inside to the middle of the road. He's, uh, he's, he's put a bit of a squeeze on, uh, on Russell, but there is quite clearly still space for, for a car where George is. In fact, where Bottas is, is, uh, is basically just up to the pit lane exit line anyway. So any car coming out of the pit lane would have to keep their car comfortably within this width or they'll be getting a penalty. So there's clearly space for a Formula One car to be here, but it's really high speed, remember. This is 330 kilometers an hour. It's really high speed. There's damp parts on the, uh, on the track and George has his DRS open with a big closing speed as well. Now, the reason Bottas has moved out from the inside is largely to put a bit of a squeeze on Russell, but also to keep the dry line, which you can just see up here. You can see the width of the dry track pretty much. Is, uh, is where Bottas is, and it moves slightly further out the longer you get up to the uh, up the straight towards the corner. But Bottas doesn't want to be on the inside, and he, uh, he wants to open up the line, and he wants to stay on the dry part of the track as well. So it's twofold for, for Valtteri, and he's absolutely entitled to do that. All he's got to do in defending is not make a big change of direction. Now, he hasn't made a big change of direction. If we take it back a little bit more, you can see there's no big jink for Bottas here. He's on the inside and then he just lets his car meander to the outside, but there's no big jink at all. The car, the, the wheels are barely turning. It's just the curve is to the left. The straight is curved, it's to the left and Valtteri's just eased the steering. That's all he's done. But at 330 kilometers an hour, George is basically a bit worried at this point. He's got the DRS open. He's absolutely blasting down the straight and you can see there's wet patches around just up here. You can see it's a little bit dark, a little bit shiny. That's a wet surface. And uh, with the DRS open, he ends up coming wider and wider and wider. And then you just see here off the, uh, the top of the tire there, a little bit of spray where he's just picked up a bit of moisture, loses grip over the white line. And, uh, and he ends up out of control and binning it into Bottas basically. Take it back to the, uh, the point before the contact. Again, you can see the angle that, that he's got is, uh, is still slightly turned, George. But basically, he's got margin here. He's got a little bit of space to, to Valtteri on the inside. He's got a little bit of space to the, uh, to the white line on, on, the, uh, on the outside. But he just, in the end, runs slightly wide and opens up that, uh, that gap to, to Bottas on the inside there. He needs to be narrower, ironically. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult place to be. But that's where the space is, rather than put yourself on the white line and the grass where it is low grip. And, uh, and it ends in, in pretty bad circumstances for him. What the f was he doing? Honestly, is he a f for what? What the f oh. Are you okay, Lantry? <laughs> Big one. All good. Next angle to have a look at this is on board with Kimi Raikkonen, the car behind who has a good view. And uh, you can see the two cars on the inside. Then we play it through and uh, you can see, if I just wind it back to here, you can see how much Bottas has moved over 
But I've just shown you there's room on the outside there for, for Russell to be. It's a, it's a tight space, but there is a space to be had. And, uh, and actually, if I play this one through slowly, you can see Bottas just actually moving left as he's seeing that Russell's really squeezed. He doesn't want to have a, a, an impact here at all, but uh, it's, it's a little bit too late and Russell's already lost control on the outside and, uh, and bang, the two of them go into a, into a big collision. In the end, I think this one is basically a racing incident, but it's come from, from a, a, an error of judgment, really, from, from Russell here. He's got out onto, the, uh, onto the, the wet white line on the outside. It's painted, it's slippery, he's coming with a huge speed, and he's just placed his car in slightly the wrong place and lost control all on his own. What Valtteri did, I think, was the normal thing in, in how you defend. And if we look at, uh, at this one, we can see a comparison here of Russell attacking Bottas, and Hamilton later on attacking Lando Norris. And you can see the comparison is very similar, albeit slightly later on the, uh, on the straight for, for Hamilton and Norris. But if I play it through, both drivers here right on the inside. Already you can see the trajectory of, of Lando is going to be slightly moving out. And he is, but Hamilton commits to the outside. Russell's on the outside as well. And if I stop it there, you can see both drivers on the outside are pretty well squeezed here. The difference is, of course, in George's case, there's a bigger wet patch on the outside, there's less grip. Um, but Norris has also moved from the inside to the middle of the road towards the outside, putting a squeeze on, on, uh, on Hamilton in the same way as, as Valtteri did on Russell. The rule is you have to leave a space on the outside. Both Norris and, uh, and Bottas did that. And then it's up to Russell whether he wants to commit for that gap or not. He did and he misjudged this one. And, I think the way that he was so livid with Bottas afterwards almost deflects the, the attention from, from himself. I think without that, we'd look at this accident and think that Russell's lost control and, and it's his fault. That did muddy the waters a little bit, but even George now has, has come out with an apology, realised that maybe he overstepped the mark on this one. He's young, he's super fast, he was in a brilliant position in the Williams to score some points again. He will get them, but uh, this is another one of those learning days for George. So that was a look into the controversial crash between George Russell and Valtteri Bottas, but there was so much more action through the race as well. For more of a look on the Verstappen-Hamilton lap one battle, Hamilton's mistake, Verstappen's mistake, and plenty more as well, check it out on F1 TV.